Hello and happy Archtober! My name is Gibran Graham and I am from the Briar Patch Bookstore in downtown Bangor. I'm very excited to be reading a story to you today as part of the City of Bangor's Arttober celebration. It's all through the month of October celebrating the arts, whether they are performing arts, visual arts, literary arts, and many others. Special thanks go out to the Commission for Cultural Development for the City of Bangor, who have put together all of the different activities and online offerings for Arttober this year. And today, I am going to read to you The Legend of the River Pumpkins, a Maine tale, based on a true story by Bangor author Robert Close and illustrated by Steve Close. But first, I need to dress up for Halloween. There you go. What do you think? Perfect for the story? Okay, let's get started. The Legend of the River Pumpkins. Our story takes place along the Penobscot River in Orono, Maine. See the Penobscot River? There it is, winding on down. We've got Millinocket up here and Orono down here. And just below that is where you find Bangor. There once was a man named Mr. Pennett who lived in a white house along the Penobscot River in the great state of Maine. A seven-year-old boy named Russell lived next door to him. The two were good friends and often went fishing together in the clear waters of the beautiful river. It was autumn and Halloween was fast approaching. The leaves in the trees were flame red and orange. The air was cool and the wind whistled in the branches. One morning, Mr. Panette wandered out of his house and down to the river. The water was calm and as still as a pond. That's when he saw them. Bright orange spots standing out against the dark water. Mr. Panett took a closer look. Pumpkins in the Penobscot. There must have been a dozen or so bobbing gently in the little cove along the riverbank as if calling for attention. Mr. Panett smiled at the thought of river pumpkins and couldn't get them out of his head. How did they get there? Where had they come from? Had anybody ever heard of such a thing? He asked all around town. Everybody shook their heads, some even saying, Gosh, no, it's all news to us. And river pumpkins? Impossible! Later that day, Mr. Panette went down to the river again to see if the pumpkins were still there. They were. But there was something else. Russell, his hair as gold as the pumpkins were orange. Look at all those pumpkins. Mr. Panette could see that Russell was crying because he had his arms around himself and his shoulders were heaving. And every so often, if he listened carefully, he could hear Russell sob, oh, oh, oh. Mr. Panette walked over to the boy. What's the matter? He asked very quietly, so as not to startle him. Russell turned. His tears had cut long, clean paths through his dusty cheeks. It's almost Halloween, he sobbed, and, and I don't have a pumpkin to carve into a jack-o'-lantern. So, Mr. Panette exclaimed, as he didn't know what else to say, and then he asked, why not? Russell sniffled and took a deep breath. Then he explained, My mom says she's worried. Worried? said Mr. Panette. Yes, worried, said Russell. 
She says pumpkins have bugs and goo. Bugs and goo, said Russell. Mr. Panette thought about this for a moment and then volunteered, well, maybe your mom will get unworried. Russell shook his head. Not before Halloween, he sniffed. It takes her a long time to get unworried from things that worry her. Maybe Russell's mom was right about the bugs and goo, but Mr. Panette wondered if these were good enough reasons not to have a pumpkin for Halloween. Maybe she would let you have a pumpkin if you didn't carve it, he suggested. You could just set it on the porch as is. Russell looked disappointed in Mr. Panette's answer. But then it wouldn't be a jack-o'-lantern, he said. That's true. As Mr. Panette stood with Russell, his eyes wandered to the river, and then an idea jumped into his head. Russell, he said, as he knelt down in front of the boy, your mom was talking about a regular old field pumpkin but maybe she'll let you have a river pumpkin. Russell made his eyes big. He wiped his tears on his shirt sleeve. Is there really such a thing? He asked. Of course, said Mr. Panette. Look. He turned Russell toward the cove in the river where the pumpkins were bobbing. It's true, said Russell, but where did they come from? Since nobody seemed to know where they came from, Mr. Panette decided that it was up to him to take a guess. I've heard, he began, that every year, way up north in Millinocket, the field pumpkins grow so big and plump that they break from their vines. Then they roll into the Penobscot River and float downstream to this very spot for boys and girls to take for jack-o'-lanterns. Russell smiled when he heard his story. And then Mr. Panette said, are you ready? For what? Russell asked. To get your river pumpkin. Russell clapped his hands and jumped in the air. Then he helped Mr. Panette drag his canoe down the bank and into the river. After they were seated, they paddled out through the cool, dark water to the pumpkins. Take your pick, Mr. Panette said, making a grand gesture with his arm. Take any one you like. While Mr. Panette steadied the canoe, Russell reached over the side and grabbed the biggest pumpkin. He pulled and strained and huffed until he had tumbled it into the boat. It's a good thing they're wearing life jackets, so that they, in case they tumble out of the boat. It landed with a thud. Then they paddled back to shore. Mr. Panette watched as Russell got out of the canoe and grabbed hold of his pumpkin. It was so big that he could barely get his arms around it. As Mr. Panette tied up the canoe, Russell made his way up the riverbank. He swayed this way and that as he carried the tremendous pumpkin. He headed straight for his house. That is a big pumpkin, isn't it? Have you ever seen a pumpkin that big? Wow. Mr. Panette followed at a short distance until he heard the front door open. Russell, cried the boy's mom. That pumpkin is dripping wet. Still holding the pumpkin, Russell swallowed hard. At first, he could barely speak. Then he found the right words. It's a river pumpkin, he announced. Hmm, said his mom, putting a hand to her chin. Does it have any bugs? Not that I know, said Russell, and he began to explain. Every year, up in Millinocket, the field pumpkins get big and fat and break from their vines and roll into the river. Then they float down here for boys and girls to take for jack-o'-lanterns. Russell's mom rolled her eyes. What a story, she said. I've never heard such a thing in my life.
Mr. Panette saw that Russell was now worried that he might lose his river pumpkin. Russell's legs began to shake. His knees began to knock. His shoulders began to heave. And all the while, he clutched his gigantic pumpkin for dear life. Mr. Panette knew it was time to make his move. He came up right behind Russell and greeted his mother. Hello, Mrs. Osno, he said. And then he looked down at her little boy, trembling under the weight of his enormous pumpkin. Hey, Russell, he said. That's a mighty fine river pumpkin you have there. Mighty fine. Mrs. Osno's eyebrows flew up. What? she said. Then it's true? Oh, yes, said Mr. Panette. And then he explained, every year up in Millinocket, the field pumpkins grow so big and plump that they break from their vines. Then they tumble into the river and travel downstream to this very spot for boys and girls to take for jack-o'-lanterns. After a pause, he added, just in time for Halloween. Mrs. Osno just stood there, staring at Mr. Panette. Then, without a word, she stepped aside. Russell stumbled into the house where he was finally able to put down his big, fat, heavy pumpkin. Hours passed. The sun went down, the moon and stars came out, and that very evening, on Russell's porch, there was an immense jack-o'-lantern the biggest on the block. It was smiling, and it had a story to tell. The end. There's another illustration on the back cover of Russell looking at all the pumpkins bobbing in the river. Do you think the legend of the river pumpkins is true? Have you ever seen river pumpkins? Pumpkins bobbing along the Penobscot River? I haven't seen them before, but that doesn't mean that they're not really there. I think I'll keep my eye out next time. Hopefully, no one's going to turn me into a jack-o'-lantern. Thank you for joining us. If you like this story and would like to add it to your home library, we have copies available at the Briar Patch. Happy Halloween!